in the weather today, getting to the end of the month. The patterns have shifted to something more reminiscent of March. Will there be any more winter weather? Well, we'll check it out. The world's hot spot for today, once again, Central Australia, the town of Birdsville, checking in with 115 degrees. Birdsville is not a mining town, but it's located in a ranching area and on a historic stock route. It has the only geothermal power station in Australia, generating 80 kilowatts, which supplies the entire town. At the other extreme, the world's cold spot, Summit Greenland, with minus 69. And that's a polar research station at an altitude of 10,000 feet. And we can actually see it there on the satellite imagery. There's current conditions around the country this afternoon. Wintry weather in the northeastern U.S. Snow from Maine into northern Vermont. And we've got winter weather advisories going through this evening for an additional one to three inches of snow. Here's how the visible satellite imagery looks this afternoon. Some very strong westerly flow in the upper levels, and you can see some of those denser tops in northern New England where that precip is taking place. No significant problems elsewhere in the northeastern U.S. Flood watches continue for parts of northeastern Illinois, and dense fog advisories have been out most of the day in the Chicago area. In the southeast U.S., a very warm day, Large plume of 70 degree temperatures all the way up into Virginia, and we can even see almost 80 degrees at Washington, D.C. this afternoon. We reached 82 degrees earlier at both Charleston and Wilmington, and at Raleigh, North Carolina. Their warmest overnight low for January at 67 degrees. But that's probably not official because we could go below 67 degrees before midnight. The satellite imagery shows partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies across the region. A large chunk of what we have is mid and upper level cloud. And down to the south of Louisiana, it looks like a strong MCS out there in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. We are going to be seeing an increase in precip once again going into tomorrow. And SPC has a slight risk of severe weather in Alabama. And you can see that cold front is right there in that area, and it will link up with the southern system that's coming out of Texas this evening. In Texas itself, you can see this occluded system moving into the Abilene and Dallas area tonight. We're going to see warm air advection precip developing in southeast and east Texas and Louisiana tonight, and dynamically driven precip in the Red River region, including Oklahoma and much of North Texas. And as you can see, we do have the strong upper-level dynamics, upper-level low around Clovis, New Mexico, a strong jet coming into the base of this trough from about Douglas, Arizona, into the Big Bend and out towards Dallas. Jet max from about the Big Bend back to Douglas, and that's going to be emerging onto the plains tonight. And the left front quadrant of the jet right there over North Texas, so the atmosphere is definitely destabilizing. As we go into tonight, you can kind of see how things progress. We continue to see height falls across Texas, bringing the trough east and southeast. And the upper level trough moves in east Texas by tomorrow morning. And the area of upper level lift gradually moves into Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi as we get into midday tomorrow. And you can see the effect that has on the precip going into tonight. By midnight, it looks like this and by early tomorrow morning, rapidly shifting into Mississippi and Alabama. The satellite imagery definitely showing evidence of that upper level low as it shifts east into the Lubbock area. And if we go to the water vapor imagery, it's going to show up a little bit better. There's that vortex right around, uh, I guess it'd be about Lubbock into Crosbyton. In the north central U.S., many locations showing clear to fair skies. We do have a lot of snow on the ground in South Dakota. And this morning, we had winter weather advisories across North Dakota, around Grand Forks into northwestern Minnesota. The southwestern U.S. looking pretty good this afternoon. 
we're going to be seeing a warming trend across this entire region. California getting grazed by some Pacific moisture. And we can see that a little bit better up there in the northwestern U.S. Winter weather advisories are in effect for the Washington Cascades through tonight. West of Yakima up to Stevens Pass, another two inches of snow is possible. And in Alaska, some serious cold showing up. Not only minus 40s, but also minus 50s. That's not wind chill, that's actual air temperature. Minus 52 at Bettles and minus 52 at Fort Yukon. Looks a little warmer out there in the Northwest Territories, only minus 30. However, much of this region is under extreme cold warnings all the way back into Yukon itself. So here's a look at what's going on with the pressure, wind, and temperature. The orange colors, that's going to be the most severe cold, basically minus 20, minus 30, minus 40, and lower. And that's not going to be coming south because we're in a high AO pattern, high Arctic oscillation, high Arctic oscillation index. And that means a very strong zonal component, which tends to keep things bottled up up north. It's not very conducive because it gets kind of broken up as it starts coming south. Now, as we go into the weekend, some of that cold air does make it into Quebec. And they're going to be seeing minus 30s, even a few minus 40s there. But that will be about the extent of it. Meanwhile, strong southerly flow coming up into the British Columbia coast into Alaska. And that will cause a bit of a warm surge into the Northwest Territories going into next week. There it is. And that's going to help break up some more of that cold air. But we will be shifting next week into a negative Arctic Oscillation pattern, which will bring some of the cold air south. But we're not really charged up. And you can kind of see what happens there. Some of the cold air does start building into Manitoba. That's one surge for Friday. And then another possibly coming up for Sunday. This is kind of a ways out. This is certainly subject to change. But at the very end of the sequence, Monday the 5th of February, 10, 36 millibar high across Manitoba with some fairly cold temperatures into the northern U.S., into the central states. Not record cold, but certainly a bit chilly. So I'll go ahead and show you how those temperatures stack up in the U.S., and I'm going to go ahead and forward this into next week. So I'm not going to worry too much about this. It's going to be mild across much of the country. It looks like around maybe the weekend next week. Yeah, there comes some of that cold air south into the Great Lakes. That's going to be Saturday, February 3rd. This is a tentative forecast. It's subject to change. The freeze line all the way to Kentucky and the 20-degree line all the way into Ohio and Wisconsin. And up there in Ontario, that's going to be the zero-degree line. So that's definitely some of the colder air. So some rapid modification as we get into Sunday, the 4th. And some of that cold air does sneak into the central plains. The freeze line down to Oklahoma City. And 20s return for the Dakotas. So yeah, not terribly cold, but it will shift things a little bit from that strong Pacific pattern. So there's the big picture at 500 millibars. A trough through Texas ridging, building across California into the Great Basin area. So that's coincident with that warm-up in that region. The Pacific Storm Track, at the moment, take an aim on British Columbia, one segment heading into California as well, but the brunt of it heading to the north. As we go into the weekend, you can see the changes. Ridging, building across California, bringing those temperatures up. The trough progresses eastward into the southeastern U.S., Going into Sunday, a broadening of this ridge in the western U.S. as the upper lava low moves to the east. Another strong weather system out there in the Pacific, still taking aim on British Columbia. Then for Monday and Tuesday, you can see the trough starts grazing the west coast region. Another low sinks into the Great Lakes area for Wednesday. And you can see this amplification across western Canada we become more meridional. And you're going to see a, a mega block start to form. And that's it coming together right there. Troughing underneath this cutoff high 
in Saskatchewan. So that's going to slow the patterns down a little bit in terms of the long waves. And by the time we get into Saturday and Sunday, we're looking like this. In fact, it breaks up into closed vortexes. And that's usually a sign that the model runs are starting to get a little bit uncertain. So let's take a look at the weather in terms of the Q vectors. That's always a popular chart. You can see this Q vector convergence across northwest Texas around midday today, and that shifts northeast into Oklahoma, Fort Worth, down to about Brownwood. So that's going to be this evening, a lot of lift working across north Texas and Oklahoma. And there's the effect of that upper level lift. Lots of convection all the way from Lubbock to Childress down to Fort Worth and down towards Gatesville. And even some thunderstorms forming around Abilene and moving along Interstate 20 out towards the Mineral Wells area. Some more convection closer to the cold core low. That's around Snyder, Texas. So things are definitely picking up in the Lone Star State. Going into tonight, you can see things move rapidly to the east. The lift moves into the Arkansas, Louisiana area during the morning and into Mississippi during the afternoon. Some subsidence coming in the backside down the base of that trough. And we can go ahead and summarize the weather going into this evening. There's the precip moving into the Dallas area and then on into the Shreveport region. That's going to be along this occlusion. The main frontal boundary is still down to the south. Going into tomorrow, plenty of storms around Mississippi and Alabama. Conditions improving throughout much of the central and western U.S. A little bit of ridging building into the Dakotas. Then going into late Saturday, things shifting into Georgia. And then up the east coast for Sunday. Lots of snow from New York City. Boston back into northern Pennsylvania and into Cleveland for midday on Sunday. Gradually that activity tapers down as we go into Sunday night. A little Alberta Clipper coming south into Nebraska and Iowa for late Monday into Tuesday. That'll be kind of a dry system. Some effects there in Chicago. Then things start getting active there on the west coast. And this will bear watching that could be a major atmospheric river event. And you can see how things come together for Thursday and Friday. There could be some significant rains, high winds, and the whole ball of works there. Some of that cold polar air coming south through Ontario into the Great Lakes region. And we discussed that earlier. There it is. Affecting mostly the northeastern U.S. and the Great Lakes. Meanwhile, the Pacific weather system crosses the Rockies around the 3rd. And because of that indeterminate upper level pattern, really broken up into a strong split flow pattern with vortexes in between, this is going to be a little bit uncertain. So we're going to check back in on this for next week, and we probably will see some changes. So stay tuned. Okay, and that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our new supporters, David McCannelly and LK22. Thank you very much for your support. And we'll see everybody back here on Monday for the supporter edition and on Wednesday for everybody else. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.